Hello and welcome. Today's video is all about a high possession based football manager tactic. If this is not the best high possession based tactic so far, it is certainly one of the best. It was created by Pennington and in this video what we're going to do, we're going to break it down to see why it was so successful for him and for me because I have tested it out. We are going to look at the tactic and then we are going to check out the results from my test which you will certainly not be disappointed in. So for now, let's get started. So this tactic was created by Pennington Zero on the SI website. In the video, I will be talking about the tactical concept, the plays that you need for the tactic, and also the tweaks that you can make. This is all written by Pennington, by the way. Nothing is written by me. The visuals are by me and the test is by me. That is literally about it. So all the credit for this tactic goes to Pennington. So the tactic is called Total Control and I can vouch for that, that is exactly what you're going to get. It's the 4 2 3 one. it's highly entertaining, you get high possession and you will be successful or you can be successful. He claims it's not a plug and play tactic but it's very hard for me to agree with that. I don't really disagree of course but it's hard for me to agree with that as I plugged in played with it and it done very well. This is his first tactic uploaded ever and the reason is simple. For the first time he's managed to make his players play the actual way that he wants them to. Like many others he's been inspired by Barcelona's high possession approach to the golden days of the 2010-2011 season. Match engines of diverse FM editions have been tough for tactic creators, again I can agree with that, to create a possession based tactic. After testing and tweaks, he can finally present a tactic that covers all of his personal needs, which is full blown control over the game, getting 70% plus possession, maximum possession in front of the box, centre field, a high number of passes between the central midfielders, the DM, MC and the attacking midfielder, actual attacking intent with through balls and dribbles, which can be difficult to get with a possession based tactic and highly frustrating the opposition, minimising their chances, making sure they get a low to non extra G from the opponent. He believes the tactic is not perfect as none is but I believe this isn't possibly far away but it's highly not a plug and play tactic he says. The main reason is that the roles of the players on the pitch is not exactly what the description of the role is. He's had to change some of the roles and the instructions so that the players actually play the way he wanted to even if the text wasn't pointing towards it. You then truly need to check your player's stats since a good defender according to the game for his position may not actually be the best choice for you. So for player selection, as a rule of thumb, you always need to have good stats with these attributes even for defenders. So this needs to be first touch, decision making, vision, off the ball and positioning. This is an extremely high tempo tactic where the players will need to act and think fast. Without those stats, expect mistakes. And if you make mistakes, just like any possession tactics, you will pay dearly. The actual numbers needed depend on the league level, aim for those stats that at least are the average or above. You can deal with lower speed, as he said you can actually deal with lower speed players which is actually usually the stat that boosts the price of certain players. For the tactical concept, the tactic will provide extreme possession in front of the opponent's box with fast short passes to keep possession without the risk of being closed in. The lateral players will come inside on attacking movement whilst going wide on defensive movements. While this may seem counterproductive, the best counter attacks need to go through non-use space to be fully effective. So widening up when you lose possession actually translates into faster pressing on the counter attacking movement at a point where a fine tuned team will actually get to the ball before the opponent get to it, almost always. It's also well known that possession for possession's sake is a bad and fruitless approach. The attacking mentality actually helps you create chances and get some free balls and shots in when the opportunity is decent. At the start of the season, opponents may try to attack against you, which will lead to some easy wins. As soon as they realise you have a dangerous approach, they probably will start to park the bus and hope for a break. With this tactic, one break can kill your game as they will have a lot of space behind your defence. You will need to monitor how you lose the ball, even at the first highlight where you see a counter attack. They will have one or two of those in a game, so correct whatever is needed. If the problem is that your players take too much time with the ball at their feet and get tackled, you can actually abuse and use the instruction of very attacking mentality. You may lose the ball more but for goal kicks instead of counter attacks. Goal kicks are not as dangerous since you will be regrouped and get possession back more easily. If the problem is more longer passes, intercepted wastefully, bring down the mentality to positive, even balanced. 
other than that just be alert and tweak individual instructions according to the problem you are witnessing now if you have your own input you can actually go to the si website you can go to this download page and you can put your own input you can make your own tweaks you can share your tweaks this is the great thing about the fm community he's welcoming them any tweaks you can share these tweaks people can download these tweaks or they can just download the original at the moment this tactic has 55 downloads on the version one and it has 36 downloads on the second version let's get these download numbers up this tactic deserves to be used it deserves to be showcased it deserves to be downloaded we are now going to look at the tactic and why i am bigging this up so much let's look at the tactic let's look let's look let's look let's look let's look So here we are, the total control football. This could be literally and generally one of my favorite tactics so far in Football Manager 2021, if not my favorite. Of course, I need to test it out more, but I tested this out with Braga, who are predicted to finish fourth in the Portuguese league. We walked the league, but before we get into the results, let's look into the tactic. Now, like he said in his post, he is open to some tweaks. Of course, I can now make my own tweaks. The only tweaks I really made was the wing back positions. He uses two inverted wing backs. I just wanted to use wing backs to try and just get some natural width within the tactic that and dropping the pressing intensity down just by one is the only tweaks i made but we are going to focus at the main tactic as the main tactic is what i actually use most of the time so in goal for the sweeper keeper we have a sweeper keeper on the defend duty he takes fewer risks the two inverted wing backs are on the support duty their instructions are take fewer risks dribble less shoot less often get further forward tackle harder and mark tighter in defense we have two central defenders they're instructed to tackle harder and mark tighter. In defensive midfield, we have a ball winning midfielder trying to win the ball back for you so you can be back in possession. And his instruction is to take fewer risks, get further forward, which is interesting, and mark tighter. In central midfield, we have an advanced playmaker. His instruction is to pass it shorter, dribble less, hold his position, tackle harder, and mark tighter. In attacking midfield, we have another advanced playmaker under support duty. Pass it shorter is his instructions. Alongside dribble S, run from position, move into channels, tackle harder, and mark tighter. You will notice straight away the two advanced playmakers under support duty are doing two different things, like he says in his post. Whatever the description says, he's using instructions to kind of change and differ the role. Whilst the one in central midfield is going to be holding his position, playing off passes, the one further ahead of him is going to be moving into channels and roaming from position so already the freedom of movement is completely different on the flanks we have two inside forwards they're instructed to pass it shorter shoot less often get further forward roam from position sit narrower tackle harder and mark tighter up top we have the full snine who is going to pass it shorter shoot more often roam from position move into the channels tackle harder and mark tighter now we are going to look at the team instructions for the team mentality is on positive the attacking width is set to very narrow so it's going to be very narrow we're going to channel our play through the central area for the approach play we have underlap on the left and we have underlap on the right we're going to focus through the middle try and get more intense attacks through the middle and we are going to be playing out from the defense the passing directness is on much shorter so a lot of the passes are going to be on the ground of course also kind of risk free so of course if you're playing more direct naturally more risk is going to be into your passing game because you are trying to look for the more direct pass whereas much shorter you are looking to retain possession so in a way it can be safer if you do have the right players and the tempo is on much higher which kind of heightens the risk again so if you are going for a much lower tempo kind of you are reducing the risk he's going for a reduced risk on the passing directness whilst increasing the risk with the higher tempo this tactic does very well with risk balancing just like the mentality the mentality is on positive but the players have take fewer risk so though naturally they will be taking more risk we are actually instructing them to kind of tune down the tendency of the risk taken so very good risk balancing in this tactic in the final third we do have mixed crosses work the ball into the box dribble less with the dribbling and creative freedom is on be more expressive in transition we do have the counter press when the possession has been lost and when the possession has been won we will hold our shape with some of the players actually roaming from the position try and pick a pocket to receive the ball when the goalkeeper is in possession we will distribute it quickly and he is going to roll it out out of possession for the defensive shape 
very very intense we are using the offside trap much higher line of engagement much higher defense line we are forcing the opposition on the inside marking and tackling we are using tighter marking extremely urgent pressing intensity prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in those are the player instructions and the team instructions some nice risk balancing i must admit even with the dribble less, with the dribble less, you're asking your players to look for the pass first before attempting a dribble. But with the more positive mentality, your players will look to be more direct and dribble more to get closer towards the goal. So this is where dribble less is actually very, very good on some players as well. Not just good for keeping possession and looking for passes, but also to reduce the attacking directness to kind of suit the total control philosophy. But now we are going to look at the results because that is by far my favourite thing about this tactic. So... So for the Portuguese Premier League, we won the title. We played 34, 126, drew 5 and lost 3. We got 83 points with a goal difference of plus 54. In the Europa Cup, we got knocked out in the group stage, which was very, very harsh. In the Portuguese Cup, we got knocked out in the fifth round by Sporting. And in the Portuguese League Cup, we got knocked out in the semi-final by Porto. But in the Portuguese Premier League, if we go for the team detail stats, average possession, Braga, 63%, miles ahead of the team that is second. 58% isn't actually bad for a possession-based tactic. To beat that and go to 63% for me is very, very good. With the goals, we scored the most goals with 86 goals. We had 2.53 per game and a 62.82 expected goals for. We had the best cross completion rate which is kind of surprising but we only care about the possession based stats and look at the pass completion ratio percent 92 percent but what's even more impressive about that ratio is the passes completed we actually completed 20,329 passes in the league that is almost 5,000 more than the team that came second and for the clear cut chances as well we created the most with 127 off the ball we were very very good as well we won the possession second most times in the league and when we look at interceptions we came in seventh as well so again one of the better teams in the league these stats are very very impressive for me anyway even for the goals abel Ruiz, who was our full nine he scored 17 goals whilst galeno our inside forward scored 13 for the assist, we have a few players in the top 10. We have João Noves, we have Ricardo and also Andre Huta, three players in the top 10 for the assist. For the key passes, we have João Noves there as well, 128, just one behind the player that came in first. And if we look at the player that came in first, he also played more games. But for the key passes per 90, we can see João Noves, our advanced playmaker. He played the most key passes per game with 6.04. And for the clear-cut chances created, Jao Noves again with 42 clear-cut chances created. So your advanced playmaker in the attacking midfield position is going to be key in creating chances. For the passes attempted, Ali Almasrati, he completed the most passes in the whole league. In the whole Portuguese Premier League, our central midfielder completed the most passes. 2,606 passes he completed, Andre Horta came in third and Jao Noves came in fourth. So the top five, we have three players with the passes completed. Absolutely incredible incredible but we're now going to look at the team report for the attacking efficiency we were aggressive and we were clinical for our defensive efficiency we were quiet but we were leaky and that could be due for the opponents breaking our high defense line my defense wasn't really suited for a very very high defense line matter of fact my team wasn't perfectly suited for the tactic in general but it did very very well and that again toast to the tactic the tactic is very very good how do we score most of our goals? 43 from play shots, 20 from powerful shots and 15 from headers. Most of our assists, of course, came from through balls, 18 from crosses, 12 from short passes, which is probably the most I've seen so far in Football Manager and the 13 from corners. So now let's look at the squad statistics because again, one of my favourite parts about this video is the average rating of our players. So if we just take away Chris Lund because he's only played one or three games and that came off and that was as a sub. But if we look at Jao Nove, 7.56 average rated player. Andre Huta got a 7.42. Ali Al Masrati, he got 7.40. David Carmo, our central defender, he got 7.35. And our fullback Ricardo, he played 33 games, got 13 assists with a 7.3 average rated player. I mean, I can go through this whole team and talk about how great most of these players were. And you can see with the average rating how many greens are in this team. Now, 
again something that i don't really see much because when your team overachieves in this game that doesn't always reflect on the average rating of your players so it's very pleasing for me to see that we did overachieve but we also got some very very good match ratings and finally we are going to talk about training now i believe the tactic creator left their training to the assistant manager and if you know me it is sometimes i like to get involved in the training especially when it comes to tactics like this where there's a clear tactical idea what i want to do is try and showcase the tactic as best as i can the best to my ability and i believe training can can help so for the training if there was one match during the week this is what it looked like on the monday we did a team bonding we focused on possession and some teamwork on the tuesday attacking patient and playing from the back on the wednesday it's all about chance conversion it should be chance creation my mistake but it should be chance creation and a match practice on the thursday we have defending ball retention and teamwork whilst on the friday we have attacking movement ball distribution and the match review saturday is the match sunday we recover and do a match preview you if we do have two matches in the week i would use the control possession preset for the two matches and just use that instead but that wraps up this video a big shout out to Pennington. make sure you download his tactic as well get his download numbers up not that he needs it i don't think he's actually looking for that but i believe this tactic deserves to be used it deserves to be showcased and deserves to be known about my name is rdf it has been a pleasure recording this video for you don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed hit the like button leave a comment if you have any suggestions as well if there's a tactic out there you want me to cover make sure you leave that in the comment section but for now i will see you soon Peace out, stay safe.